It yeah. might just be the distance between. <laughs> Why? It's time for some more hilarious electro boom. Specifically, using cathode rays to make super fast electrons. Awesome. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer, a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. Today I'm gonna make cathodic ray or electron gun or you know one of those <laughs> things that's used in old CRT Something. tube TVs that would shoot electron and draw picture on the surface of the TV. Well, I'm not gonna make a TV, just the electron gun. Yeah. Old school TVs like that. Yep. Right after I clean this mess. <laughs> What? That's how engineers work or makers or whatever. If their desk is not like this, it means they are not working. <laughs> oh yes. Now at the nuclear plant, I worked at cleanliness standards within the actual plant were pretty high as in leave it cleaner than when you're finding. But within certain areas in the shop, you can have some levels of organized chaos here to work, but Inventory is quite heavily tracked, and even shop work has to be done in accordance with procedures. But I've seen stuff more strewn around there. Just keep in mind, this is far away from the actual plant, and working in the field, it's one of those situations where the setup and the cleanup can take longer than the actual job by a lot. There you go. Well, I've never made something like this before, but I might know the science behind it. From what I understand, you connect a very high voltage DC, like 10 kilo, 20 kilo volts mm -hmm. or higher to something like this, which is a point connected to negative called cathode and like a disc with a hole at the center to positive called anode. So electrons accumulate over the pointy cathode and this disc becomes positive. And if the voltage is high enough, electrons start escaping from the cathode and go to the anode. And because there is a hole at the center, they continue going forward. <laughs> so the technical term for this, for the heated cathode is called thermionic emission, which means heat allows the electrons to escape the surface. Kind of like on a much larger scale, electrons are freed within a particle accelerator or ionized in a plasma in a fusion reactor. Basically, you're overcoming the work function of the material to get free electrons. Except, doesn't quite make sense. Let me see if I understand. See if there is an electron a little bit off-center to the disk, say closer to the top side, there would be more force pulling it towards the top side than the lower side. So it should, instead of going straight forward, it should deflect up like this. In which case, it will just hit the positive anode and goes back to the power supply. And for electrons, those right at the center, that C equal pull from the disc would go straight and continue going straight. So from my educated guess, every other electron that is a little bit off center would curve and go out like this and I suppose a whole lot of them will just hit the disc. Now you're going to want to use magnetic fields to focus it though and that's how you keep it going straight depending on how, how straight you want this thing to go. Now ideally you'd want this thing to operate in a vacuum to minimize interactions with the air molecules so you can have it going straight through unimpeded as well just like particle accelerators are often done in a vacuum chamber. But yeah, it's about the proper arrangement of your magnetic coils to get it to go as straight as you can. We're focusing on your TV screen. He said he wasn't making a TV, but if you were, you need to focus it enough so you can watch. They need to strike specific spots to produce an image, if that's what you're going for. Is that right? I guess we'll test and see. <laughs> like I said, I don't have any experience building one of these. And why research when I can't... Can't say I've built one either. These are a little bit before my time. Just build and see what happens. Anyway, I'm gonna use my ZVS driver circuit I made a while back. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? The circuit creates like 20, 30 kilovolts of high voltage DC. <laughs> so I guess I'll just arts. make my anode and cathode and see what happens, eh? I mean, the energy, the kinetic energy of the electron is directly proportional to the voltage you're applying. After all, energy is just voltage times charge. So, yeah, high voltage can get these things going pretty fast. And he's on the order of kilovolts, so, yeah, these electrons are going to be moving at relativistic speeds. This is with my lights. 
Here's a washer I want to use as anode. Okay, here's the anode and cathode. Let's turn it on and it's see so if tiny. I can see any faint trace of electrons jumping between them. I can hear it, but I don't see anything. Put your it might on. just be the distance between... <laughs> Why? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, the distance is too big. Let me shorten the distance with my finger. <laughs> Why? High voltage, man. <laughs> it gets you when you least expect it. Okay, let's try yeah. again. I'm gonna change the gap between the two and see what happens. There you go, shorten the distance. We'll oh, see. That's cool. There is a tiny bit of corona discharge. There it goes. Maybe not that close. I feel a wind. I know I should be used to this by now, but him using his fingers, putting his fingers like centimeter or two away from the high voltage and... <laughs> No gloves, no nothing. I know he knows it's safe that he's that nothing really bad's gonna happen, but still, this sort of stuff wouldn't be allowed at a nuclear plant. Blowing on my hand through that holder. When there is high enough voltage in air, because of the concentration of charges in the terminal, the charges jump out and ionize the air molecules around it. Because of our pointy cathode, there is a huge concentration of electrons at the tip that ionizes mm. a ton of air. And now the negative air is repelled from the negative terminal, same as in my Van de Graaff experiment. Fly away oh. like this. Ow. <laughs> They flow to the positive terminal creating wind and they leave their electron on the terminal which means there is electric current. The wind will continue blowing a bit past so anode. This diagram. Oh, what's going on? Someone is not happy down there. Let me show you the wind. See? Oh, it oh, even yeah. puts the fire out. And this wind effect is a lot more pronounced because we're not in a vacuum. It's still interacting with the air. The wind is so strong. Ow! It burned my finger. Okay, I need one of these long type. There you go. Ow! What? It'll still get you. I like that he at least did one that that uh, moved his fingers further away from the source. Is it shocking me? Oh, well, it is high voltage. <laughs> Ow! What if I put the flame between them? Ooh! It starts on arc. Yep. Right away. That's Flaming cool. hot air is ionized and very low resistance for very high voltage. For low voltage, it's like open circuit. Well, see how far the wind blows through the hole. And see if I increase oh, the air gap, there is almost no wind. Ow! If the terminals are further, the attraction is weaker and the current is less. The closer they are, the higher the current. High current heats up air that ionizes better and at some... Yep, incident energy is proportional to current, which is why at a nuclear plant, the arc flash... Some of the highest arc flash risks I've seen is on the low side of a big transformer, which is interesting. At some point, the air totally breaks down, creating a low resistance channel that a glowing hot arc runs through. I just remembered something. In a lot of cases, they make the electrode of the cathode glowing hot. Because in that case, the atoms of the electrode start vibrating hard and have a lot of energy and the electrons become much more fluid and it's much easier for electrons to escape. Again, thermionic emission, it's proportional to temperature, hence the playing with fire and voltage. Maybe I should do that. Here's how my circuit and transformer is. I'm thinking to use a heater element, which I'll cut a piece of resistive wire from my hair dryer element. <laughs> and put it there, sure. and I want this to be isolated from the rest of the... Good old classic uh, I squared R heating, where it's where the power dissipation of that heater is proportional to the uh, current squared times, times the resistance, so that makes sense. Circuit. So I'm going to run a single turn of wire around my transformer core to get enough voltage to run enough current to heat it up. Let's try it. Here we are, I pass the wire through the core and put a piece of heating element at the end and let's see if it can heat it up at all. Oh sh This thing keeps arcing here and there like there is no tomorrow. I'll just put a piece of electric tape to there isolate it better. Okay, let's try it again. Ooh. 
Oh, that's it cool. works, but I oh, guess I have to pick a longer piece of wire for more resistance to limit the current so it doesn't melt right away. Okay, here is a longer piece. High current melts. <laughs> oh, there you go. Here we are, folks. Let's see if the electrons flow much better now. Ooh, it's glowing. Ooh. That's cool. It does seem like it jumps easier now. The experiment Hands needs to be done in a vacuum. Yes. So I guess now I have to buy a vacuum pump. Stay tuned. Hey, I bought a <laughs> tiny vacuum pump and I'm gonna... <laughs> What's that sound effect? <laughs> yes, just like those old school cathode ray tubes are in a vacuum and generally it's... And it's really just a control mechanism. So the electrons don't interact with the air molecules and you can keep it nice and focused. It also has the added bonus factor of keeping the arcs further away from you. Use the vacuum chamber I made a while back for my Tesla coil. That's a good one. Just that the ceiling gasket underneath it is broken. So I bought one of these silicone sheets that they use for cooking food or something and I'm gonna cut a gasket and put it there just like this. Let's hope it seals my chamber well. Here, I'm gonna put a balloon in there to see if it expands. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there is an exhaust port that you have to open before <laughs> turning shy, it on. Yeah. There is a bit oh, of texture on the silicone too. Maybe that's not helping. I would like to have Electroboom show up to like plant operator classes or something because one of the important things that is taught early in a plant operator's career is making sure your system is ready for startup. Walking down your system, making sure everything looks good, um, watching out for, say, exposed electrical hazards, um, mechanical hazards such as the exhaust being cut off, such as not having an exhaust path, path uh, making sure your pumps um, have, a, have a suction source and a discharge path, you know, basic stuff, reality check sort of things to do, because he's great at showing the consequences of that. I really, really enjoy that. Plus, he's funny. I'm going to glue the silicone with silicone to the base to make it seal better. Cool. There we go. Let's try again. Well, unfortunately, the vacuum seal is not that great, but doesn't matter. Let's start testing. I placed my anode nothing. and cathode at a distance of around 9 to 10 centimeters and right now my circuit is on but there is no way for the high voltage to jump across such a big distance, see? In air the concentration of molecules is so high again. that electrons jumping out of the cathode stick to them and ionize them. That also creates a tiny glow at the terminal. Then they slowly move to the positive terminal and the electrons jump out that also creates a glow there. Let's start a vacuum and look for interesting stuff. Oh, see, I see some chrono discharge on the oh, edges cool. of okay. everything. Oh, look at that. Okay, my power supply immediately nice. jumped to 10 amps. Okay, <laughs> the vacuum is getting stronger. And this is around the maximum vacuum I can get, and okay. I have 5 volt 10 amp power supply. How much vacuum is he at? What's the, what's the pressure? Supply. Okay. In vacuum, I know in like big particle accelerators or say the big con or say the main condenser at a nuclear power plant at basically 29 inches of mercury vacuum, which is pretty close. Electrons have no way but to directly jump across the gap without hitting any air molecules. So they accelerate to huge high speeds depending on the voltage across the gap. They're almost weightless and there's no one to stop them. And this is what we call cathode ray or electron beam. Electrons mm -hmm. don't glow on their own. But because we typically have partial vacuum, the super high speed yeah. electrons sometimes bang against the remaining... Perfect vacuum would be sending something into space. Air molecules and, and the exchange of energy makes the molecules glow. Now I'm going to increase the energy connecting to a battery that can supply much more current at 12 volts and let's see. <laughs> nice. Look at this! Wow! What are those clumps of energy there? Clumps. Is there some wave going on? Oh, that's pretty. Clearly there is still some good amount of air molecules yeah, in there that say. heat up and rise and create this curve. 
back to the 5 volt supply voltage, I get a much more uniform radiation. Concentrated. Although I can't see it in the gap. Maybe I should have replaced the gas with something that would glow. I mean, a lot of this is just same principles like crazy stuff like the Large Hadron Collider. You have beams of charged particles, electrons are just an example of charged particles, and you have them in a, in a near vacuum, and you have powerful magnetic fields to steer them to get to the extremely high, almost the speed of light kind of speed. It's, it's awesome. But here is kind of a scaled down version of it, and also how it used to make images on TVs. Now I connected a tiny heating element there. Let's see if that makes a difference. Yeah, no difference there when there is no vacuum. Okay, here it is with the 5 volt supply only. Okay, let's turn on the heater. Ooh, I don't think it made much of a difference. Maybe the, my voltage is so high yeah. that the arc itself creates enough heat and I don't need a heating element. Interesting. Like I said, atom vibrations in a very hot metal is so high, electrons literally fall out of it. And that makes it much easier for electron to shoot out when a negative voltage is supplied. In fact, that's what they use in the old vacuum lamp components that thanks to the heater could run at a much lower voltage like 200 mm -hmm. volts. A simple diode was like this. Because electrons were oozing out of the heater, there that's would be cool. electric current if the voltage was supplied this way and not- Your trade off of between supplying higher voltage or higher temperature. The other way around. This time let's connect to the battery. Wow. And turn on the heater. Yeah, yeah, it didn't make much of a difference. And see when I turn off the heater, it still stays heated because of the- It'd be interesting to see if it got more of a vacuum. Arc. Well, my vacuum chamber is not perfect and maybe my voltage is too high. But hmm. now, let's do something drastic. Of course. Let's use my Marx generator to create hundreds of kilovolts across this thing. <laughs> uh, really? Just that I'm pretty sure at those voltages I would create some pulses of X-ray. So let's not... You could. So these X-rays are what's known as Bremsstrahlung or breaking radiation. So you get these electrons at high enough energy that when they strike the target, that is to say the anode, they could emit some x-rays, especially if you crank up the voltage. How much did he say this was? You can get some levels of penetrative x-rays above 50 kilovolts for sure. He probably already had some, he probably had some low energy x-rays already, though not enough that it would cause a significant dose. I would still think the electrical hazard's the biggest hazard at play. Now anything higher than that, like gamma rays, no, those are on the order of millions of electron volts. and. I don't think, or I sincerely hope that thing doesn't give you that kind of voltage. Let's see. Do it very long. Here goes Mr. Marx. <laughs> <laughs> the pulses are very short, but the voltage is super high that makes the electrons go very fast. And Keeping the pulses short is good for minimizing overall radiation dose. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Tons of instantaneous current illuminate the mm. entire channel. Well, because anything about dose, it's about time, distance, and shielding. Doesn't have much in the way of shielding, but in terms of time, he's keeping that pretty small, and distance, he's right upon it. So the main thing he's doing to minimize dose is time. Short pulses, and he only ran it for a few seconds. Again, the bigger hazard was the electrical hazard. I was hoping to see some electrons passing the hole on the other side. Maybe if I had filled the chamber with a bit of noble gas or had some fluorescent sheet mm, to illuminate sure, them. Like a anyway, vacuum tubes are replaced with modern silicon components, thankfully. But I'm sure cathode ray has its application in lab settings or some niche cases. I mean, in the early days of nuclear science, they were used for like diagnostics, imaging, old school oscilloscopes, and signal processing. They were pretty accurate and high resolution for the time. The main disadvantage is they're bulky and they require a lot of energy to use and at least within nuclear labs they are sensitive to the radiation so they don't exactly last the longest. Cases. What the f Anyway. Thanks so much for the recommendation and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.